ask that um, someone would lead us in prayer tonight. Amen. As we begin tonight's Bible study. Any one of our leaders. All right. Father God, in the precious name of your son, Jesus, as we come before your presence, God, a few of your humble servants have gathered together, oh God, at the feet of your servant that we might hear from you. God, we pray, Heavenly Father, for a fresh anointing for Pastor Rodney as he prepares to teach your word, God. We pray, Father, that you will give him clarity of speech and that you will give us understanding of your word, oh God. We thank you and we praise you for this time that you're giving us to gather together. We pray that you will be in our midst and bless all that is said and done here on today day. Give us understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. We thank God for this privilege that we have to study his word. Amen. And I thank God for each and every one of you who thought in our robbery to join with us tonight for truly study of God's word is essential and important um, for all of us that we might be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Um, for truly, you know, the, you could study on your own and that's true. You can um, study with friends and family. You can study with anyone. The challenge is, where's your heart and your focus? For many of us, our hearts and our focuses are on the things that are relative to us. So things that we care about whether it be finances, whether it be parenting, whether it be relationship, whether it be blessings of the Lord, whether it be peace or joy, you know, our focus can be on those things. And so we'll study the word of God relative to those topics, right? And the challenge with that is that just because you want something or you want to see something doesn't mean that that's what God would have for you, right? Um, a lot of times, like when we go, like I know in my life, when I've gone through struggles, in my life when I've gone through difficulties, you know, can anybody just guess what is the first thing we pray for when we're going through struggles? What is one of the first things we pray for? To if get you, out of it. To yeah. get out of it, that it would stop, peace. it would cease, that we would have peace, that we would have joy, right? But what if it's God's will for you to go through that thing? Yeah. Then you're praying opposite of what his will would be for you. Right. So in those moments when you're like thinking, God, I want to get out of this. Right. And I want to get out of this. I want this stuff to change. Right. God may send a, a rhema word to someone to say to them, teach endurance in the fire. You see, mm -hmm. and then the Holy Spirit can lead us. So, yeah, you could study on your own, but it, it caught it, it's hindered in your walk with Christ because of the fact of that you you don't always see clearly because in that situation you're in it you're in the fire right you're in the lion's den you're in the the flood right and so god has to send someone that that maybe is outside of the fire to kind of share some things with you and so tonight we're going to be talking about praise and thanksgiving um that's why i chose the song that i chose to, for us to listen to in the beginning, um, because there is something that we all have to have as believers. It doesn't matter your gift, doesn't matter your position, doesn't matter your title. The one thing you better know, you better know how to use that name. And you better have Amen. confidence in that name. Confidence yeah. in that name, that that name is strong enough to bring you through every situation. The word of God says God has given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. And so I don't know about you this evening, but you've got to have that witness in your spirit that he is Lord. Yeah. You've got to have that witness. Now, how do we have that witness? The same way we have confidence in a chair right? You don't have confidence in that chair until you sit in it. You don't have confidence in that car until you ride in it. You don't have confidence in your abilities until you perform it, right? The same way you will only have confidence in the name of Jesus when you are put through terrible situations yeah. and the situation doesn't change, 
but you call on the name of Jesus and he changes your perspective and even at some times changes the situation. And that's one of the things we have to figure out because when you think about praise and worship, right? Or praise and thanksgiving, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Like what, what do we praise God for? Everything. Okay. All he has done. Say everything. Yeah. Love it. Give me, give me specifics in your life. What do you praise God for? for who he is. Healing. I was about to say for who he is. For who he is. Praise him for who he is. And what? Who for healing. Is, who is he? What he do? I want you to explain it to me as if I'm not a child of God. Explain to me as if I'm not a child of God. You, you can't say, well, I praise God for who he is. And my next question is, well, who is he? That's I praise him for being the, the Lord, my Lord and Savior. Uh huh. This is, what did he save, save you from? Save me from my sins. Okay, and he's your Lord. That's he saved me from myself. That's you're, right. You're his servant. Now, now, y'all, yeah. y'all not listening. Y'all over talking each other because y'all so ready to say the first thing that comes to your mind. What I'm saying to you, remember, this whole year we're talking about discipleship. And so you got to be able to answer a question to people who don't know your colloquial phrases. You got to right. be able to answer somebody who may be hostile against the gospel. So you got to think, right? When I think of the goodness of Jesus, right? And all that he's done for me, what has he done for you, right? Don't just say he saved me from my sin. What is that? What is that? What sin did he save you from? Oh, I said he saved me from myself. Okay, he saved you from himself. So you was beating up yourself. He saved me from that. He saved me from suicide. He saved me. Okay, from now we get into the meat. What yes. happened in suicide? Tell me. He saved me from it because wow. when I opened, when I was gonna do it, I didn't because okay. he gave me something to remember. Um, what he what the plan was for my life. Okay, so how did he stop you? By not allowing me to jump off a bridge. Okay. How? What came to your mind? My family. Okay. Um, did you hear a voice? Did you see? Because this is the realness of Christ. Oh. Right? Amen. Oh, yeah. Right? Because I could say to y'all saints, I could say to you, oh, he saved me. I was a miserable wretch undone. And the world wants to know what about you was a wretch? Because let's be honest, when y'all, when oftentimes we talk about ourselves, we talk about it light. Let's talk about the dirt. Because see, if you don't talk about the dirt, then you ain't got no praise. You're not free. Right? So your praise comes from the fact that you knew the dirt you were in. Right? And so your praise will be at a certain level if you remember the dirt. Your praise, see, when you forget the dirt and you think that you always been saved, then your praise goes down. But when you remember what he saved you from, when you remember, when you remember that before you wore the dress, mm. before you got the collar, before you got the title, before you was anointed, before, uh, what did he save you from that makes you say, I'm going to serve him for the rest of my life? Now, some of you might say, well, uh, I, I didn't go to church before, so now I go to church now. That, that's not anything special. Because that doesn't speak to me. Because I go to church when I need the preacher to pray for me that I get the job. <laughs> I go to church. I had a drug dealer come to me and said, Pastor, they were shooting last night. Can you pray for me? But I'm going right back out there to sell drugs. So that don't make you save. What did he save you from? That yeah. is your, this is the reason <laughs> why I praise him. This is the reason why I glorify him. This mm -hmm. is the reason why I ain't going nowhere. He's my Lord and my Savior, and I want to learn about him, and I want to know about him. That's what the world wants to know, because for them, they're in their situations, and they're like, there's no hope for me. Yeah, yeah. So, Natasha, there's somebody tonight on a bridge, because they see no other hope. So how do I know that that voice that I'm hearing inside is God? How do I know that that voice that told me don't slice my wrist is God? How do I know when my heart was broken and I didn't want to see life anymore? How do I know that God 
saved me? Or was it just my conscience? Was it just luck? Was it just timing? Right? Natasha. Well, I can speak only for myself in my own life. That's what I want you to speak. <laughs> Amen. And um, he reminded me that it's not about me. So that's how I knew it was God, because, you know, when we're in ourself and of ourselves, it's always us, 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 right. selfishness. But when we're um, a child of God and we, we are honestly filled with the Holy Ghost and we're looking to just be opposite of what we are, like it in that particular situation, um, I knew it was because he, he was like, but it's not about you. What about your family? You pray for them. How did he you do that to you? Them. How did he do that to you? He spoke to me. He was like, oh, no, no, so that's, it's not about you. Okay, so that's what I want you to understand. I want you to mm -hmm. understand that the world needs to know, because a lot of people think that you are people, you as, as believers, that you guys are people that just believe in fairy tales, right? Mm -hmm. Because oftentimes we find great difficulty with explaining mm -hmm. this thing that we believe, this God that we serve. Why do we go to church every Sunday? Because mama taught me? Why am I worshiping God? Because mama taught me? And, and they taught me that that's the way I'm supposed to hold my hand. This is the way I'm supposed to shout. See, when you understand that it was nobody but God. See, and there's a lot of folks who they're not, and I pray nobody watching tonight online or here tonight, that you're not, that you don't fall in this category. If you look at your old you and you say, I'm like, you know, um, when I was then, I was doing this, and then I decided, or when I made up my mind, you ain't safe. Let me put it that way. You ain't safe. Why? Because the word of God says salvation doesn't come from the will of man, right? Nor the will of others, not even yourself, but only by God. Jesus said, no one can come to me unless the father first draws him. So when we think about praise and worship, it's so easy to say, like, you know, what you guys said in the beginning. Well, I praise him. Okay, you can praise him for who he is. Okay, who is he? Because the world wants to know. I can praise him because he blessed me my life. Okay, all right. You sure it was God and you sure it wasn't your intelligence? You sure it was God and you sure it wasn't your, your tenacity? You sure? Because the world needs to see clearly. That's why the Lord, when he sent, um, when he sent John, what did he say? He said, make straight the way for the Lord. Make it straight. Because there's so many different distractions on this, in this earth. There's so many different things. And unfortunately, you know, it used to be a time where we could say, well, you come to Jesus and you never get a divorce. Now we got divorced from the church. You come to Jesus and, and he'll protect you and keep you in your body. Now we got teenage pregnancies. You come to Jesus and you'll never, you'll love life. And you got Christians depressed and wanting to commit suicide. So what is the significance of Jesus in your life? You could only speak for yourself, right? And for you, it could be, I was on a bridge because this is what was going on in my life, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And I felt like, you know what? I don't wanna live anymore. And I heard a voice that said to me, it's not about you. And I said, Lord, help me. And he gave me the courage and the strength to step off that bridge and to trust him to work it out. Simple, because your story, Natasha and everybody else watching, your story is your story. Doesn't matter if it's huge, doesn't matter if it's small, it's still your story, but your story must be told. Otherwise, nobody understands why you shout the way you shout. Nobody understands why you praise the way you praise. They think you're praising because you got a car. They think you praise him because you got a husband. They think you praise him because you got a wife. They think you praise him because you got money. 
yeah, I may praise him for those things as well. But the root of my praise is what the psalmist says. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within and sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry and from the waters he lifted me and now saved am I. It's a story that you gotta tell. And no matter, you could change your makeup, but don't change your story. You could change your hairdo, but don't change your story. You can get titles, but don't change your stories. You can, you can be promoted, but don't change the story. You could be saved for 50 years, but you better tell people what you were saved from. Oh, thank you, Lord. You better tell them what you were saved from. If you were a mess, you better tell them, I was a mess. And I couldn't figure out my way. I tried to do right and I failed. But Jesus, but the Lord, this is why we praise him. So when you think about praise and thanksgiving, it's easy just to thank him for the stuff, like the, the silver, the gold, the fishes and loaves of bread and the stuff you have today. But that's not why you're saved. If you're saved, you're saved because he did something in you. He did something in you that nobody else could do and not even you. If you're saved, I'll say that again. If you are saved, it is only because God did something in you. If you don't know what that is, chances are you may need to be saved tonight. And then we can, you can praise God right along with us. So let's get into the word of God. Amen. Somebody look with me and let's start off in Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. Thank you, Father. Lord, I bless you. Oh, God. Exodus chapter 15. When you get there, can somebody read from, you know, let, let's, let's read from verse one. Let's, let's take a verse each, right? And, and I'll tell you when to stop, okay? Uh, we'll probably read down to verse um, 13, okay? Amen. So Exodus chapter 15, beginning at verse one, I'll begin. It says, then Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord and spoke saying, I will sing to the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord, the, Lord is is my, the Lord is my strength and my song. He has given me victory. This is my God and I will praise him. My father's God and I will exalt him. The Lord is the man of war. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's, Pharaoh's chariots and armies he has thrown into the sea. The very best of Pharaoh's officers have been drowned in the Red Sea. The, the depths, depths have, have covered them. They sank to the bottom like a stone. The right hand, O oh Lord, has become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O oh Lord, have dashed the pieces the enemies. Dashed the pieces the enemy. In the greatness of his, in the greatness of your majesty, you thrown down those who oppose you. You unleashed your burning anger. It consumed them like stubble. And with the blast of your nostrils, the waters were gathered together. The floods stood upright like a heap. The depths con congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My desire shall be satisfied on them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. You blew with your wind, 
the sea covered them. They sank like lead. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. And that's lead, lead. Oh, lead. Like iron. Yep. Who is like you among the gods, O Lord? Who is like you? You are wondrous because of your holiness and all and all spirit, all inspiring because of your splendor. You perform miracles. Yes, Lord. You stretch you out your right hand, hand and the earth swallow your enemies. With your unfailing love, you led the people who had redeemed. In your might, you guide them to your sacred home. Amen. Amen. Now, if you keep reading this, this particular chapter, what you're going to find is in Exodus 15, this is really a, a story or, or a chapter of salvation, right? Salvation is something that is not something that can be compared to anything else. It can't be compared to anything else. In other words, salvation is so diametrically different than anything else that you can go through. Why? Because the word of God says that it is the gift of God. It's not of your works, lest anybody could boast. It is nothing that you have done. Nothing that you have done, nothing pretty, nothing nice, nothing that you have done. A, a picture of salvation would be the picture of the prodigal son right? How he went out there and wasted everything. And when he came back, he had nothing left to give. And he said, I'm only, I, I'll be a servant. I'll be whatever. Jesus tells Peter, he says, Peter, those who have been forgiven much, they love much. Folks who are critical, folks who are negative in their tone, folks who are always criticizing other people, are people who have forgotten that they had sin, have forgotten that it's only by the grace and mercy of God that you are even where you are today. And when we forget those things, when we you know, um, uh, uh, push those things aside as if my sin is smaller than yours, you know, when we start to do that, we start to show that we have forgotten who we are. Jesus said to Peter, when the woman came to him and she was crying and washing her hair with his feet, uh, with her, uh, washing her hair, you hear me? Washing his feet with her hair and drying it and patting it down, you know? And Jesus said to Peter, when, when they were being so obnoxious, Jesus said, when I came into your house, you didn't give me nothing. Yeah. Sometimes folks will sit there and criticize you because you worship God but they don't know what God delivered you from. Oh, they don't, yeah. they criticize you. Uh, it don't take all that. No, it don't take all that for you. Uh -huh. so when you've been through what I've been through, you know that he is worthy to be praised. You know that he is worthy. It is something, come on. Some of us, we get so excited when somebody gives us, we find a $50 bill. <gasps> oh, such a great day. <laughs> but after all that God has done for you, somebody mm. got to beg you to open up your mouth and praise him. Some of you get excited when you get a, 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 a raise or you get a contract or you get a bonus or you get, you go on vacation. You're excited. You plan that thing for months. But yet and still, when it comes to the things of God, you have forgotten that everything you have is being upheld by the grace and mercy of God. The scripture says, it says that if God hasn't left a remnant among us, we would have all been consumed. We would have all been destroyed. Why? Because we have an enemy of souls whose only desire 24 hours a day is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And if it's not for the hand, what did the scripture say? It says, when the enemy came up against me like a flood, who lifted up a standard? The Lord. Mm. The Lord said, you can't go so far, Satan. You cannot touch them. Even when you messed up. And Satan, who's the accuser of the brethren, said, God, look, they don't love you. Let me get them. 
And there was many times that the Lord told Satan, although you were guilty, told Satan to back off. So when you think about why you praise the Lord, you have to know who's upholding you. You got to know who is the one who maintained you. Who are the one that didn't let your business get on the street? The word of God says that some men's sins are known ahead of time. So guess what? For those of us, they caught you, right? You know, you got caught, right? If you got caught in anything, just raise your hand. Say, I got caught. Yep, I got caught. I was exposed. I got caught. I was found guilty, right? But there's a whole lot of us on this line. You ain't got caught. You better be careful how you treat the ones who were caught. Because in the same measure that you treated one, you shall be treated. And God is going to make sure of it. Because here's the thing. The scripture says some men's sins are known ahead of time. But other men's sins go into the judgment. And this is where the word of God says, many are going to say, Lord, Lord, I did this. And he's going to say, I never knew you. Because your whole life, you lived for you. Your whole life, you lived for your best interest. Your whole life, you served your own purposes. And when it came to my purposes, God's purposes, you put that as second base. And this is the challenge for us. As children of God, he tells us, let your light so shine before men. Right? So every day, I got to remember who I was and not get caught up in what I got and who I am today. Oh, today I got it all together. Today I got a roof over my head. Today I got clothes on my back and many different clothes that I can, uh, I can go in my closet and pick from. And today I got gas in the car. And today I got maybe one or two or three cars in the backyard. Today I got all this, I got a bank account. Today I got some money in the bank account. Amen, somebody, right? So today I got this. Today I got my family together. But what about the days when you didn't? What about the days when you didn't have it? What about the days when nobody wanted you around? What about the days when people thought you were less than a man, less than a woman? What about those days? Have you forgotten who brought you out of that stuff? Who picked you up? Who turned you around? Here's the cliche. Who placed your feet on solid ground? Have you forgotten the one who took that needle out your arm and no longer are you on the corner uh, taking drugs? Have you forgotten the one who took you out of rehab and, and now let your hair start growing back, your eyelashes? and eyebrows start growing back, right? Your body start getting, have you forgotten the one who gave you the money for the gym men membership? Have you forgotten the one that got you the red bottom shoes? Have you forgotten the one who got the roof over your head? This is a danger for believers because just like the world, we can become caught up in the things of life. And nobody is exempt. I'm not exempt, and neither are you. Look at what Moses and the children of Israel said. They said in Exodus chapter 15, oh, God, help us. He says, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and its rider he has thrown in the sea. In other words, y'all know that. What is that from? Who's the horse and the rider? That's Pharaoh and his army. Pharaoh and his army. Pharaoh and his, his army. So Pharaoh and his army. And what was Pharaoh and his army coming to do? He's trying to get the children of Israel. Kill the children of Israel. Okay, what did you say, Brother Arthur? To destroy them. To destroy them. So Pharaoh wasn't coming to take them back into slavery. He was coming no. back to kill them. Right. And yes. he sent his army to do so. And they were going to do it maliciously. And what did God did? God stopped the enemy and destroyed not only the enemy, but the very thing that the enemy was using to come after me. Glory to his name. Look at what he says. The Lord 
is my strength. Now, one thing, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. There's this one thing I want to share with you. Where did he throw the horse and the rider? Into the sea. Into the, into the sea. sea, right? Into the sea. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's your first, pe your first place of praise. When the Bible talks about he throws stuff in the sea, what did he throw in? What did he throw in? Our sins Whoa. into the sea of forgiveness. Right? Yeah. Into the sea, right? To never again come up, right? Where did it, where, where did God put the enemy? In the sea. In the same sea. In the, in the, in the bottom of the yeah. red sea. The word right? of God says you are more than a conqueror. Well, You're yeah. more than an overcomer. Why? Because your enemy has been defeated. Jesus defeated the, and 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 if that doesn't excite you, right? My God. Because too many of us are walking around saying the devil done beat me up all week. How mm. the devil got free reign over you? Come on, somebody talk back to me. How how, how the devil got free reign over us? He has free because reign when you belong to him. He would, would you say, Elder? He you has free reign when you belong to him. Uh -huh. When you belong to the devil, then he has That's free reign. Yes, but sir. if I belong to God, he can't have that control. He yes, doesn't sir. have that control over me. The devil cannot overwhelm us if God is our father. Thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank you, God. Doesn't mean we won't be tested. Doesn't mean we won't be tried. But the enemy, the horse and its rider was thrown into the sea. Look at what he says. He says... Because then he solidifies this by verse two. He says, the Lord is my strength. See, I ain't worried about the enemy because I'm strong. I ain't worried about the enemy because I got it together. I ain't worried about the enemy because I got tenacity. No, I'm not worried about the enemy because the Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him, my father's God, and I will exalt him, right? Then he says, the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. In other words, he's a conquering God. He's a victorious God. He's a mighty God. Somebody look at um, Psalms chapter 50, Psalms chapter 50 and verse 23. Thank you, Lord. And, and in fact, read verse 22 and 23 in Psalms chapter 50. Now consider this, you who forget God, mm. lest I tear you in pieces mm. and there be none to deliver. Whoever offers praise glorifies me and to him who orders his conduct aright, I will show the salvation of God. Do you see that? He said, you, you, got, you have to consider this. He said, because if you ain't careful, you might forget God. Remember God told the children of Israel, he told them, when you go into the promised land, when you get those promises, when you get your prayers answered, when you get your blessings, when you get your promotions, the Lord said, when you get your family, when you get your husband, when you get your wife, when you get your children, when you get your five dogs and your three cats, when you get uh, all the stuff you get that you wanted, when you get your boat, when you get whatever you want, right? God told the children of Israel, be careful that you don't forget. Be careful that you don't forget. Now, God wouldn't tell you to be careful if it wasn't possible that you could forget. Amen. Okay? He said, be careful that you don't forget. He says, don't forget who brought you. Now, in Psalms 50, it says, now consider this, you who forget God. Right? He says, lest I tear you in pieces and there be none to deliver. Whoever offers praise glorifies me. And to him who orders his conduct aright, I will show the salvation of God. So, two things that we must do we got to offer God praise all the time. What David said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. But then the second thing you have to do, you have to order your conduct. In other words, Amen. you have to start changing inside. Amen. You got to stop the attitude you have. You got to stop the things you're doing. Why? Because if you keep doing those things, the word of God says in the New Testament, God is not mocked. 
The soul that sinneth, that soul shall die. So, so we have to order ourselves aright. And let's be honest, none of us are perfect. We all agree with that. So if you're not perfect, that means instead of you worrying about me, you need to be worried about you. Because if you get you right, then guess what? You could be an example that I can follow. Amen. Amen. You don't, you don't, have, to, you don't have to tell me how to be right. Show me. You have to tell me how to act. Show me. Show me how to act. Amen? Amen. Let's go further. Look at what he says. When you go back into Exodus chapter 15, he says in verse 4, Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has cast into the sea. His chosen captains also are drowned in the Red Sea. The depths have covered them. They sank to the bottom like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, has become glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, has dashed the enemy in pieces. Now, what's the right hand or who is the right hand of God? Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Amen. We, we're going to test you tonight. Okay? How do you know that? Because he's the only son, begotten son. He's the way. The truth. What did you say, Brother Arthur? He said on the right side of God when he went back to heaven. Amen. See, that's what you got to, you got to know the word of God, right? Okay. When you, um, when you look um, in Exodus chapter one. I'm sorry, it's not Exodus, Ephesians chapter one. Ephesians, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm jumping ahead of myself. I apologize. Ephesians chapter 1, somebody read from verse 15 down to verse um, 20. No, let's read down to 21. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of them. The eyes of the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Okay, and read one more verse. Far above all principality and power and might. Oh, I got right. you. <laughs> <laughs> and dominion in every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. Y'all see that? This is why we know that his right hand is Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because he has seated him at his right hand and gave him the dominion and the power over everything, both in this age and in the age to come. And even if you keep on reading down to the end, it says, and he put all things under his feet. If it's under the feet of Christ and we are the body of Christ, that means it's under your feet. Okay? Because we are the body of Christ. He says, and gave him, Christ, to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is why we have to work on our soul salvation. This is why we have to work on and we have to perfect praise. You got to perfect worship, right? Yes, the way Lord. you worshiped him this year, you need to be worshiping him better next year. The way you worship him last year, that shouldn't be your go-to worship. No. Those of you who sit there and it's been one, two, three, four, five, six years, you haven't had not one shout come out of your body. What's wrong mm -hmm. with you? What's wrong Jesus, with you Jesus. that your belly is so tight that it doesn't flow like living water? What's wrong mm. with you that you have not released it to God? 
to say, God, I give my praise to you. But your praise have been consistent from day one, whether you got a two-step and you go on two-step. And I'm not talking about shouting, but in the sense that you got, you know how to dance. But I'm talking about if a sound doesn't come out of your mouth, and I mean an abundant sound, right? Mm. Come on. Some of y'all shout like crazy if somebody walk you down the aisle. You shout like crazy if somebody gave you a job or if you bought a house. You shout like crazy. Come to Jesus. Mm, thank you. Mm. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Mm, got you. My God. Mm. Mm, you so Amen. Good. You ain't got Tight nothing lit. else to say but that. And people got to tell you. And as soon as the music died down, your praise dies down. Because you don't know what you've been. You don't forgot who you were. You don't forgot what he saved you from. Holy Spirit. Holy that. Spirit. Maybe that's why you don't have a praise. Maybe that's why people got to beg you to praise him. Maybe that's why people got to tell you. They got to slap you in the stomach and say, come on, from your belly. And you're like, I'm trying. My God. I'm trying. But it's something blocking it, something blocking it, because you don't know. You don't know. Listen, can you imagine being in jail for life with no hope of parole and, and the governor gives somebody clemency or the president give them clemency? They're on death row. And that man or woman will come out of prison saying, I'm just so thankful. <laughs> Yes, set a fire in, Lord. I'm just so wow. thankful. They don't come out of prison going, took them long enough. Where's your praise? See, God says, we read it in Psalms just now. The one who prays him is the one that glorifies him. The one that enters into his gates with thanksgiving in your heart. Not entering the gates, whoops, another Sunday. My day to usher, my day to sing. Oh, God, I just made it here. Oh, God, my back is hurting. Oh, Lord, you wouldn't have legs if it wasn't for the Lord. Amen. How many accidents have he saved you from? How many times your job was on the line? How many times did everybody around you was fired and you held on to your house and your car and your family. How, how, how many times you, you, you didn't know what was going to happen and you tried as best you can. You was just like uh, uh, Panaya, right? And, and, and Hannah, you know, uh, uh, Panaya was sitting there and she was, she was just putting them out. Mm, mm, mm. Putting them out. Mm -hmm. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Hannah. Is going to the house of God, coming home, empty belly. And it wasn't that her husband didn't love her. He loved her. He loved her. But she was empty. Empty. Could not produce. And she prayed to the father. She prayed so much until the priest said, woman, put away your drunkenness. You look Yeah, she did. The way she was drunk. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm not drunk. Mm -hmm. I'm just pouring out my soul right now. And God blessed her. And what did she did? I will exalt you. Oh, God. Kept going. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a praise, it's because you ain't got nothing to exalt him about. And the greatest praise we have, salvation. <laughs> that's the greatest praise and when you have salvation all you gotta do is think about that I mean in my life I could think about 50 million things since salvation and probably about 100 million before salvation and guess what I still gotta praise and even when I'm wrong I'm like God let my praise come before you right now Father I mean, have you, let me, let me ask y'all a question. Have you ever knew that you sinned or messed up against God and God showed you his love? He showed you his mercy, he showed you grace, and he gave you another opportunity 
all day. You mean to tell me you don't thank God for that? Thank you, Jesus. You don't give him glory that, Lord, if you wouldn't have gave me a (laughs) chance, I wouldn't be here. God, I wouldn't be where I am. So many have suffered, and God, you have watched over me. God, so many have been broken, and you have watched over me. God, when you forgot about me, you didn't forget about me. God, you 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 remembered my name. You saw me right where I was you saw what you I was Thank going you. through Thank and you God Lord. made a way out of no way yeah, 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 yeah. Not because I was any good not because Thank I did the right thing not Thank because you, Jesus. I said the right That's thing like not because I dotted the eye oh God. God. but God I deserve Thank that you God and you comforted me Thank you Thank you, Jesus. Thank yes, you, Father. Yes, yes. Thank you. You're better than good to me. Glory, God. Glory, 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 God. Glory, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord. And for so many people, for so many people, it's hard for you to praise God. Why? Because you don't have it. Jesus, my God. You can't manufacture what you don't have. Jesus told the woman at the well who had a knowledge of worship. She had a knowledge of praise. She says, our father said we should worship in this mountain and we should worship here. And this is the day of the Lord and all this like that. Jesus said, go get your husband. Right? She didn't have that joy. Jesus said, he says, when you get it, mm-hmm. when you get that water that mm. I will give you. Yeah. Be in your belly. Never be thirsty. Oh God. It's gonna flow out of you, and you will never oh, thirst Lord. again. Yes. Thank you, God. Well, anyway. oh, so, Hallelujah. Well, well, what's your Hallelujah. What's your Thank excuse you, that you like a bump on a log? What's your excuse that your lips won't move freely? What's your excuse mm. that my even Lord. the saints my of God, God, say, God. Oh, mm. you still got your mouth closed because yeah. you Jesus. ain't got Jesus. 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 praise. You ain't got oh, praise. Oh, oh, you oh, Hallelujah, God. Oh, Thank God. you, Lord. But you ain't got to pray. You. Because Jesus. it's got a flow in you. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. I tried to shut up. Yes. Mm. I tried to shut up. I tried yes. to think I ain't gonna do it no more. Because I don't like the way people look at me. I don't like the way people talk about me. Oh, look, God. God. Jeremiah yes. said, I ain't doing it no more. And he's trying, mm, I'm gonna shut my mouth. I'm gonna my keep God. It it's me and Jesus and nobody yes. else. And he's no, 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 he felt no, a burning no, no, inside. No. He felt a burning inside. Yes. That was burning. And he's like, yes, come woman. on. Some of y'all folks that got menopause, you know what I'm talking about. Is well, it- God. <laughs> <laughs> It's hot. Well, I, Lord, I, for some reason, I'm hot right now. Oh, God, it's God glory. Menopause. It was something on the inside working its way on the outside. Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Inside yes. Lord, of Jeremiah Lord. that had nothing to do with Jeremiah. But Jeremiah made up his mind. I ain't going to say nothing. Jeremiah mm-hmm. made up his mind. He can't tell me what to do. Who uh-huh. do you think he is? I'm not at his beck and call. I'm my, God. In my own way. I have a sweetly saved praise. Oh, oh my God, so God. Lord. God, God. God. all the praise. Sweet, God. Sweetly saved. Mm. My God. God. Sweetly mm. saved and slide into hell. Sweetly saved. Help Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You don't have it. My God. It. And, and, and God. it's time out. Mm. For Elder Lorraine, it is time out. My God. I'm begging people to open their mouth. Right. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. 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 Oh, yes. You don't have it. You just don't have it. That's it. Don't experience right. it. That's why you're looking at me funny. That's Help why you're one, <laughs> one, one, one eyebrow raised. That's why you're looking at me <laughs> all funny because of the fact you don't know what I'm talking about. This My is Lord. to you. This is something that you say, oh, that's just, um, that's theatrics. Mm-hmm. It's theatrics. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Help God. Mm-hmm. That's so, the spirit. Lord. When you got that promotion, why were you jumping? Hey. Lord. Why? Because money is your God. You know, God. God. This is your God. You know what? Because the spirit is your God. The job is your God. The business is your God. The yes. Is your God. God. But when you know who Jesus yeah. is, yeah. The, the King, Hallelujah. nobody is the Lord Lord. of Lord. Glory God. Yeah. The one who lives with you. As oh, yes. Thomas says, and he walked you, with Lord. me. Yeah, yeah, Hallelujah. Yeah. With me. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Own. When you know Glory God. God. 
Thank mm -hmm. you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Every yeah, God. day I lift Thank my you. hands. Hallelujah. Glory God. Lord, you're so good. Glory yes. God. Glory. That is good. You can't. Hallelujah. Him. You can't. You can't get bored with him when you right. realize that every day, morning every day. by morning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. It was God's Thank mercy you, that you came Jesus. back. Jesus. Hallelujah. It was God's mercy that you stole in your job. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Thank God's you. Mercy your house is still standing. It's God's mercy. Thank you. Your kids yes, are still yes. alive. It's God's Thank mercy. You. It's Absolutely. God's mercy. Thank you, Lord. It's God's mercy. It is Thank God's you. mercy that you still have what you have. It is God's Thank mercy. You. It is God's mercy. And God says the one that he will show his salvation to Woo. is the one who praises him and Hallelujah. conducts his conduct. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Fix yourself. When you get yourself right with God and you yeah, say, well, Lord, yeah. you know, maybe I can't dance like them, but I can shout. Maybe yes, I can't. Uh, maybe I can't run around the church because my knees are hurting. But guess what? Ah, ah, my hands. Guess what? Lord, maybe I can't. I can't scream uh, real loud, but I'm gonna stomp my feet. That's I'm right. Yes, my hands. I'm gonna wave my arm. I'm gonna give uh, him uh, glory that's that's and that. honor and praise because glory. I know who allowed me. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Glory to your name, because God. Because of Him. Yeah. Come yes, on, let's, let's let's wrap this up because you know for some of y'all I know you know you're like okay pastor hour is almost done because oh, my, God, my God my God no no no, 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 no. Okay. Right. Oh, let, let, let's get in this let's get in this look at what it says. Hallelujah. Look at what thank you Jesus in verse seven in Exodus chapter fifteen right verse seven in Exodus chapter fifteen fifteen he says and in the greatness of your excellence. You have overthrown those who rose against you. You sent forth your wrath. It consumed them like stubble. With the blast of your nostrils, the waters were gathered together. The floods stood upright like a heap. Just think for a moment that the children of Israel was writing this song, thinking about everything that happened when they left Egypt and they were... They, they, God took them to a place where the water would prevent them from leaving. Mm. Because God wanted to tell them, you're going to stand and fight this battle. You're going to see this battle. You're going to see what kind of God I am. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he put them back to the sea. They didn't have to go that way. They could have gone a different way that would allow them to get to the promised land. But God sent Moses in that direction because he wanted to demonstrate something. Mm -hmm. He wanted to demonstrate it doesn't matter what the enemy is doing. If you're right with God, my God, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you shall condemn. If you're right with God, you are more than a conqueror. If you're yes, right with God, Lord. weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming joy in the coming morning. In the if you're morning. right with Hallelujah, God, Lord. you may cry right now, but you're going to rejoice. Yes, God. Yes, you, God. If you're right with God for all Thank things you. work together for the good of those who love the Lord and yes, who are called yes. according to his purposes. If you're Thank right you, with Lord. God, friends may leave, but God said, I'll never leave or forsake you. If you're right with God, it, oh, the, the world you, might be in but God said, I'll sustain you. Did y'all not remember that before COVID happened, the Lord told your pastor to tell you to start planting from home. Yes, start amen. Away. Yes, yes. Start putting $5 away. Start doing this. Do y'all remember that? Do y'all oh, remember yes. that? Some of y'all yeah, mocked it. Some of y'all didn't yeah. believe it. Some of y'all didn't follow it. But for the ones who follow it, we have yes, no sir. lack. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, Lord. Amen. 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 You remember? You had Glory. more than enough to spare. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Enough to spare. You come Thank into you. church while everybody was like, oh, the shelves are empty. You were walking to church with bags of vegetables. Here yes, you go. Sir. Here you go. Mm -hmm. Here's some more for you. You want well, some yes. more? I got well, some yes. more for you. I got some more. Why? Because when you do what God says, he will take care of you. But y'all have been Lord. walking in your pride. Mm -hmm. You've been walking in your arrogance. Yeah. Oh, I don't see what that's got to be. That's why you had to borrow money. That's why you had to get friends to loan you money. That's oh, why God, God would have gave you the money to do what you had to do, but mm -hmm. you weren't obedient. 
Hmm. My, my Lord, my Lord. Jesus. Glory, God. Ooh. Glory, God. Hallelujah. Thank uh, you. Thank you, me. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Help us, Lord God. God, you God should have destroyed you in your arrogance. Mm. He should have destroyed you and defeated you in your arrogance, but he's a God of love. He's Thank not you, willing that any should perish, but that all. Oh, see, if it was up to us, we'd be like, Lord, please, I'm tired of helping them. Lord, I'm Help tired God. of telling them what to do. <laughs> Lord, I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. But God said, it's okay, son. I got a little bit more grace for them. I got a little bit more grace for them. But y'all keep mocking them. Keep mocking his grace. Keep mocking his grace. Keep thinking that you are the control of your destiny and watch what happens. Keep mocking My Lord. Stepping into salvation like you need to keep start start denying the truth of God keep doing that and watch what happens well, watch yeah. what well, happens. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm here to tell you people of God tonight yeah you ain't got a praise if <laughs> you ain't got Thanksgiving my listen, Lord I'm gonna tell you like the five wise virgins you better go and get some oil you better go and get some oil. Right. I ain't got right. no oil to give you. You yes, cannot sir. ride off of my praise. You can't ride uh -huh. off of none of our praise. You better mm -hmm. get your own oil. Get your get your oil. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Fill That's right. It overflows because it's uh -huh. got to overflow. On. You ain't got no praise. What That's kind right. of light are you shining, Jesus? That my God. Got my Lord. That you got a business. That you got a promotion. That you got my a promotion. If I want that, I can go to Oprah. I can go to Bill Gates. <laughs> they got more than you. Jesus. None of that right. stuff means nothing. My Lord. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of things that he has. Mm -hmm. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Your life Thank is you, not Lord. consisting because you have it all together and you got. That's right. That's right. I just got well, it. Yeah. No, you don't. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that doesn't mean nothing. That's right. And the world will look at you and say, what, what that means? That's right. And the world will say, okay, you got that. You got your little bit of money. Mm -hmm. And the world will say, now you stupid because you're giving 10% to the church. That's what they say. The world will say, I keep my 10% mm -hmm. and I buy myself an island. Mm -hmm. The world says, you can't go on your cruise ship because COVID. Mm -hmm. My Lord. The world said, I just bought my own ship mm -hmm. and I'm still going to the Bahamas. My Lord. So what do you have? Let's get to the final part, Thanksgiving. <laughs> My God. Thanksgiving is more than just a turkey and the ham, the coleslaw and the mashed potatoes. Well, Lord. <laughs> Thanksgiving is more than just you saying, God, I thank you for the car. Well, yeah. I thank well, you yeah. for the house. Mm -hmm. Or I thank you, Lord, that you allow me to go to work. And I thank you, Lord, that you allow me to have a business. And I thank you. It's more than just that. Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving has to do with you acknowledging nobody but God did it. That's it. Mm. Not you. You didn't play a part in it. Nobody but God. Let's look at what Moses said. He says in verse 9 in Exodus 15, he said, the enemy said, I will pursue. Mm. I will overtake and I will divide the spoil. Let me ask you a question. Did you not know that the word of God says in Malachi that there is a devourer in the land? That's the word. Okay, there's a devourer. Mm -hmm. The devourer has been given authority mm -hmm. by God to destroy everything. Oh, yes. That's why... Nothing lasts. Mm. Nothing. Things are apt to break. They apt to crack. They will tear. You could try your best to keep in your purse a bottle of clear nail polish so that if you get a little run in your stockings, you could stop the run. Y'all know the techniques y'all use. You could stop the run in your stockings by just put a little dab of clear nail polish and stop the, see, I know, because I have sisters, right? Right? Some of y'all got all kinds of techniques. No matter your technique, whatever you have, even what you live in right now, the devourer 
has been given authority to destroy it. Why? Because God doesn't want your trust and your hope to be in anything. This is why the moment you say, this is my favorite child, next week, they do something crazy. Okay. This is why when you say, baby, you, I just love you. You are my everything. And the next week, they say something stupid or do something stupid or do something to irritate you. Because God says, I will not have any other God before me. Okay. When we forget to remember that everything we have comes from the Lord, right? Everything. <laughs> the reason why I'm still in my house because God wants me here. Right. The reason why you're still in your job, because God wants you there. Thank you, Lord. Not because you're good. Not because you're intel intelligent or talented or gifted. Not because of your contracts. Not because, of, no. You're only there because God wants you there. As soon as God, because re remember, each of us watching tonight, we all say that we are children of God. And so because of that, Satan hates you. And so the devil don't want you to have any blessing in your life. Why? Because the more blessing you have, what are you going to say? Even those of you that don't even praise God all the time. Somebody goes, wow, you are so blessed. What do you say? I thank God. Oh, so I give the honor to God. I give the glory to God. You still say it, even though you don't have a big praise. You know, you still say, I give God all the glory. And Satan hates that. He's trying to take prayer out of schools because he doesn't want God to get any glory. He wants to take prayer out of sports because he don't want God to get the glory. He wants to take everything. He wants to tell everybody, you can live any way you want to live because he wants to take God out of everything. Because God is light. And it points people to a savior, right? So if you are blessed, calling yourself a Christian, even if you're a carnal Christian, even if you're a halfway Christian, even if you're a fake Christian, but you calling yourself a Christian, Satan is going to call you out. You say, well, pastor, how do you know that? Remember the seven sons of Sceva? They were fake Christians playing like they had the power of God. Satan said, I'm going to check you out. So <laughs> Elder Lorraine said it earlier. If you belong to him, then he could have his way with you. And so you start opening your mouth saying, I'm a child of God. Satan go, no, whoa, no, you ain't. You one of mine. Oh, I'm going to show people. Keep opening your mouth. I'm going to show you. And he show people and expose you, right? That's why you find yourself in situations where somebody calls on you, maybe a friend or maybe a family member, somebody calls on you and they need Jesus. They need Jesus to help you, but you don't have the strength to do it. You don't have the power to do it. You don't have the words to say of your own. Why? Because it's empty inside. The tank is empty. The anointing, and believe it or not, for those of you who feel like you are anointed, the oil can run dry. You have to replenish it by your worship, your praise, and your study and meditation of God's word and your obedience to his word. You got to replenish that oil. Yes, Lord. You know, as, as in the natural, so in the spiritual. Many of you have heard me say, when I minister and when I preach, I come home and I need to rest, right? But guess what? My spirit needs to be replenished because when you pour out, you're empty. Mm -hmm. But so many of us, we be, we're used of God, and then we want to go and celebrate and hang out, and, lit, and the enemy goes, yeah, you're getting weak. And the enemy sees it, and he gets you stepping into something that you need not be into. Thanksgiving comes when we realize everything that I have came from the Lord. Yes. Everything that I have is being upheld by God. And when I remember that, now 
I can enter his gates with thanksgiving. Don't matter what my week was like. Doesn't matter who didn't like me. Doesn't matter who don't like me in the church. Don't matter who's saying it don't take all that. But I walk into the house of God saying, Lord, I came here today to bless your name. I love when um, Elder Lorraine sing that song um, when one time she's saying, um, I don't know what you came to do, you know, but I came to clap my hands. You know, when you realize what God has done for you, it's not a one-time praise, but everything I have is being upheld by God. All the favor, all the blessings, everything I got, it's not because I'm so good. Everything I have is only upheld by him. And if it were not for him holding it up, the devil would destroy it and destroy me in it to extinguish the light that I can possibly give to God. And this is why, for those of you who are like me, who go through attack after attack after attack, this is why you're being attacked. Because the enemy is trying to extinguish your voice. He's trying to stop you from praising God. He's trying to stop you from magnifying his name. That's why all that confusion is happening around you. That's why all that noise when you're trying to pray is there. Because the enemy doesn't want you to get in the presence of God. That's right. My God. He don't That's want right. you to, to explode in praise. Fiery play, praise. He doesn't want you to open up your mouth and to wail before the Lord. And then sometimes it's because you never had it. So you can't praise him like that if you never had it. Right. And, and what it is, it's not you making it come out. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. him depositing it within you. Yeah. And it becomes water that when you open your mouth, it flows. Amen. 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 Last thing I'll tell you before I let you go. Glory to his holy name. There was a, a question that was asked to a man named Watchman Nee. He said, how do you know if someone is saved? How do you know? Like what, what tangible thing? And he thought about it for a second. His name is Watchman Nee, N-E-E. -E. He said, I tell you this, he says, salvation is not anything tangible. He says, but I, I will tell you this, those who have it, know they have it. Because it's an abiding presence that's inside. That when all hell is breaking out out here, and here is peace. When all chaos is happening, when the enemy is coming up against you like a flood, there's something inside that says, I have you. When you don't have enough, there's something inside that says, hey, remember in the back of your shelf, you got some peanut butter and jelly and you will eat that and be gloriously happy. when you don't have all the things. And then when you enter into the house of God, praise is just there. Someone online asked just now, how do you know when God is speaking to you? Good question, right? And spoken by Angie Reyes, good question, sister. God speaking to you, he can speak to you in so many different ways. But the one thing you will know, when God is speaking to you, there is fear and trembling in your soul. It's not this, well, God is your homeboy and y'all just cutting off, you know, just wrapping a, a piece together. No, no. When you read the word of God, anytime God spoke to anyone, they fell on their faces because it is an arresting 
of your spirit. Mother Jilks used to say, it's like a harpoon being thrown into her heart. When God speaks, he come in. Those of you who are saying God is speaking to you, but you're negotiating with God. No, that's not God. That's your conscience. That's your conscience. The scripture says, those who come to God must first believe that he is God. When God speaks, he commands. Keep in mind, we serve the God who spoke, let there be light. And there was no negotiation. There was light. When, when Job was walking around fussing and complaining and wishing that he was dead, and God said, who is this that speaks without knowledge? Job shut his mouth. When God speaks to you, you feel it in your soul and you know it's God. It's not according to your liking, but God exposes you. Mm -hmm. He is extreme light. He exposes you. He reveals the truth. He reveals our nastiness. Mm -hmm. And if his glory is anywhere near you, you're not rejoicing, but you are fearful because you see your sin. Yes. No matter how holy you think you are. Mm -hmm. When God's presence come into the room and when God speaks to your heart, you realize your soul is in the balance. That's right. Because I may think I'm right. I may think, you know, I, I've been living right. I've been doing the right stuff. And then let the Lord come into this room talking to me personally. And soon as he speaks, his light shines upon every miserableness that I am, any attitude I had, any unforgiveness I had, any word I said, any tone I gave. He, he even shows the nastiness that's in our flesh. Amen. But today you got everybody saying, oh, God talked to me. God talked to me. God told me. God told me this. God told me. God told me to tell you this. God told me this. God told me that you should be, you should be uh, in your own ministry. God told me you should be doing this. God told me. God is doing a whole lot of talking. Hmm. He's doing more talking today than he's done in his entire word. <laughs> everybody got a what thus says the Lord. Amen. And everybody want to be an Indian chief. So when mm -hmm. God speaks to you, it causes for you to fear for your very soul. Mm -hmm. And it's usually when you look at the word of God and even in experience in my own life, when God would speak, there is such a revelation that happens in your soul. A revelation of who you are. Uh, Sister Angie Reyes, I, I would encourage you, look at Isaiah chapter six and look at what happened there, right? Study um, Leviticus, the book of Leviticus. When you see how God is and the type of God he is and how holy he is, and that nothing unrighteous could be in his presence. So when we say God is speaking to us, half the time, it ain't God. Half the time is us. We've been leading people, a lot of us have been leading people of our own volition, preaching sermons out of our emotions, testifying out of our emotions and our lusts and our craving for things. When we get things our way, we acting as if God is God and he is no, there's nobody like him. And we cry and we fall out. We ain't praising him for him. Mm. We're praising him because we're thankful for that stuff. Because then when we don't have that stuff, where's that same praise? When he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. And my life, and I pray for your lives, in the immortal words of the brothers on the street, stop faking the funk. If you ain't got it, go get it. You need it, crave it, desire it, right? Get off your high horse. 
Get off your prideful mindset. Yeah, maybe you never wanted no man talking to you and, and demanding anything from you. So because of that, you can't hear this from me. So I will take it back a notch. You need to be saved. You need to be saved. That's why it's not coming out. You need to be delivered. And you could be, you could be saved tonight. You could be saved tonight. And it don't matter. I don't care what title you have. If it's never come out of your belly, I'm not talking about stuff that you contrive and stuff that you put together and you train it and you put it together and you practice it. And then now you call that praise. No, no, I ain't talking about that. That's not the praise I'm talking about. I'm talking about the living rivers of water that will flow from your soul, not because you got money, right? Uh, Angie, it's uh, Isaiah chapter six. Isaiah chapter six, Angie Reyes. And then the book of Leviticus, the entire book of Leviticus. And you could even actually, you can read Isaiah from chapter one through chapter six. And in fact, you could actually read the whole book of Isaiah and you'll see it. Read, you can read the book of Daniel and see how Daniel responded to the Lord. You can read about Joseph. You can read about Paul and Silas. You can read about so many different, so many different examples of those who the Lord spoke to and what happened. Read about Job when the Lord spoke to Job and how Job responded. You don't see the response that we see happening today where folks say, the Lord talked to me and everybody's just running around saying, the Lord talked to me. And we had a conversation, me and the Lord have that kind of conversation like, that's, that's theatrics. That's theatrics. The truth of the matter is all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us deserves to die. Honestly, there's been plenty of times where the Lord visited me and my behind fall on the floor face down. Face down, scared, trembling until the Lord gives me grace. That's why I have a praise. That's why I can worship him all day. Not perfect, but I'm not praising him for who I am. You know, because I had done something big. No, I'm praising him for who he is. I'm worshiping him for who he is. And when I think about who he is, my soul is on fire. My soul is on fire. And it don't have to be a Sunday. It could be a Tuesday. It could be a Wednesday. It could be a Thursday. It could be in my car. It could be at the beach. It could be riding a bike, wherever. Because the Lord is good. And so if you don't have it tonight, if you never had it, I pray that you would desire it. Because God says, you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. If you don't desire it, then there's nothing I can do for you. And this is not hype. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Get it and watch what happens to you. You'll shake off that hairpiece in a second. Get it. You'll sweat out a shirt. You'll sweat out a suit and you ain't gonna think nothing about it. Get it. You'll break a heel and you ain't worried about it. You'll break off the other heel so your shoes will be even. Get it. Get it and you'll stop dressing yourself up as if you are the creme de la creme and you'll give God the glory with everything that you have. Get it. Get it. Before it's too late. You stand before God and you don't have it. It's over. Get it. And if you think you have it, ask the Lord, God, do I have it? If I don't have it, God, give it to me. Give it to me, God, because I want to be made whole. Amen. I don't want to be lost. I don't want to be lost. I don't want to be empty. I don't want him to say, depart from me, you work of iniquity, because you never accepted it. You only got it in your head, not in your heart. Get it. Get it tonight, right now. Get it. 
Ask him for it. Because you don't got another second to waste. You don't got another second to waste. So tonight, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. Mm-hmm. We're going to pray that for those of you who are not born again, and that river is not inside. And I'm going to talk about because of stuff. I'm saying that natural flow. Just because you stick a bucket in a well, mm-hmm. that's not when the water comes. The water has always been there. Mm-hmm. Even when you're not letting down the bucket. Mm-hmm. It's always there. Get it. So as we go down in prayer, those of you on Facebook, those of you here on Zoom, on the conference line, don't fake it anymore. If it's been a struggle, maybe you had it before, and now it's somewhat of a struggle. Maybe you thought you had it, but then something I said made you mad or made you feel like maybe there's something missing. Get it tonight. You ain't got another second. Get it tonight. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord God, that you are a merciful God. You are a kind God. You are a loving God. And you are not willing that any of us should perish, but that all of us should come to repentance. Father, we all have sinned. And we all have fallen short of your glory. We all have done wrong. We all have thought wrong. In sin, our mothers did conceive us. And we were shapen by iniquity. But Father, we confess tonight with our lips, with our words, that we believe that you sent your son Jesus, who is the Christ, to die on the cross for my sins. You paid the price for me. For God, you said that the wages of sin is death, but the gift that you have for us is eternal life. So Father, give us that life. Give us that life that is within us, not within our heads, not within our consciousness, but within our souls, where it is a part of who we are. God, forgive us of all sin. Come into our hearts, save us, and give us that river. Give us that well inside that flows. No matter if we're old or if we're young, give us that well that you promise would be in everyone who believes. God, you said, and this is the record that you have given to us eternal life. And this life is in your son. He who has the son has life. And he who has not the son of God does not have life. But God, we want life. We want life tonight. Not tomorrow, not next week. Tonight. Wash us, cleanse us, and fill us with that life. Save us deliver and set free. Father, I also pray for those who are stubborn in their spirit, who for so long have guided their own course of life, for so long has waited until they themselves have decided what's right or wrong. God, I pray that you would forgive them and that you would be merciful to them. That Father, you would open up their understanding and break the strongholds of their stubbornness in the name of Jesus. Show them that you are God. And we all must humble ourselves before you. For you said, if we humble ourselves, you will exalt us. But if we exalt ourselves, you will humble us. So God, help us to submit ourselves to you, to authority, to your word, and that we would have that life inside. Don't let any of us die without that life. I thank you right now, God. Holy Spirit, lead us to that throne. Lead us to that place where we will receive from you that perfect gift. 
Help us, Father. Give us your Holy Spirit. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I bless you all. Have a blessed and marvelous evening in Jesus' name. I love you all. Thank you for the word tonight. Good night, family. Good night, family. God bless you, Pastor. Thank you for the night. Good night. Hey, friend. God bless you, Pastor. Good night, family. Everyone have a good night. God bless you. God bless you. God bless everyone. Have a good night. Hey, royalty. How you doing, beautiful? Good night, Pastor. Good night, sister. Good night. Sure. Okay. Good night, everyone. Everyone have a good night. You too. Good, good night. Good night, y'all. Good night. Pastor. Yes, dear. Can you send me that link? Because I can't find it. I keep finding this stupid reality show, and I know that's not what you want me to to look at. The link that I told you about on Sunday. Yeah, yeah, because I don't, I, I can't find it. Okay, I'll send it to you. Thanks. You got it. Pastor, can we pray for you? Yes, please. Thank you. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for Pastor Rodney. We thank you, Lord God, for the Holy Spirit's visitation on tonight. Father, we thank you for everything that he has poured out unto these, your people. Yes, now, Lord, we pray that you will replenish him in the name of Jesus. Yes, oh, God, yes. fill him up again, Lord. Give him everything, Lord God, that he has given out, oh, God. Yes, Father, yes. continue to be his strength. Continue to be his song. Yes, God, yes. continue to be his refuge in the night watches in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we pray right now for a peaceful evening rest and sleep. Father, we know that the devil is upset because this message was so rich and powerful, but God, you be glorified and you be magnified in his life. Father, we pray right now that that our 41 Vision Church, oh God, that we will continue to hold up his arms in the name of Jesus. But Lord God, when we hold up his arms, oh God, there is victory. So Father, I pray right now that you will cover the man of God. We thank you for the shepherd. We thank you for his heart. We thank you for the love, oh God, that he has for you. God, we thank you for the love that he has for your people. Lord, we pray right now that we won't just be listeners, oh God, but that we will be hearers and doers of your word. Father, help us not to be a stiff-necked generation, oh God. And Father, we pray that this word does not fall on deaf ears, oh God, for this word is rich and it is powerful, God. We thank you for the life-changing message in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, we pray right now that you will continue to bless Pastor Rodney, oh God, whatever his heart desire is, if it be according to your will. Yes, we pray that you will bless the man of God and continue to keep him. God, continue to give him preaching power, continue to give him teaching power for such a time as this. Lord, we praise your holy and your righteous name. Yes, it's Lord. in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 Pastor, we amen. love you. Thank you. Bless you. Amen. amen. Have a good night. God bless. Good night. Amen. God bless. Good night. Have a blessed night. Amen. God bless you. As well. God bless you. Amen. Pastor, God bless you. Have a good evening. You as well, brother. God bless. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, brother. God bless. Have a good night, everyone.